Face Palm America. I'm Beowulf Rockland. FacepalmAmerica.com is where you can go to get more information about the show, to listen to past episodes, and to connect with us on social media. You know, I have been following for a while uh, someone on, um, I don't want to just say Twitter, because it's also <laughs> threads. It's also Instagram. Really, she is um, a burgeoning social media empress, uh, if you will. Uh, the, the head of an empire, a presence, a, uh, a, an all-encompassing entity of the Internet <laughs> that you should be aware of. And that is JoJo from Jers. Um, you can find her online, and, and you should seek her out, especially if you are progressive of proclivity, as, as I am, and I think most of you are. Um, if you go to uh, at JoJo from Jers on Twitter – Jojo dot from Jerry's on both uh, Instagram and Threads, and that, by the way, that is J E R Z, just so mm. that you get all of the the spelling correct. <laughs> and I am lucky enough to uh, to do some voice work and some uh, editing for her wonderful podcast. Are you effing kidding me? Uh, with Jojo from Jerry's. Jojo, welcome to Face Palm America. Thank you so much for gracing Face Palm America's presence uh, with with. Thank you for gracing Face Palm America with your presence. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Beowulf. This is so fun, and I did it's nice to put a face to the voice because, yeah, we you do the voice the intro on my podcast, which is I've always been very impressed by your voice. It's like one of those like Casey Kasem kind of things. It has like that like I don't know what the word is. It whatever it is, your voice has it and star quality. Let's put it that well, way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I liked I. I, I when I'm in the mood, um, I, li- I like to think that the the gravitas uh, is is there. But you know, mm-hmm. uh, from other times, to- you know, if if I could make a career of it, you know, and I could just like speak in little helium cartoon voices, that would be <laughs> totally cool too. And I would yeah. absolutely love that. Also, yeah, that, but um, that would if, be cool if it, if it lends something to to your podcast, which is awesome and gets tons of downloads and is really fascinating to uh listen to i love it i I, one i love your your uh your daily updates because they're Mm -hmm. they're little blurbs very similar to the the tweets that you come forward to Mm -hmm. and you also do these wonderful interviews and i gotta say i was um often either myself or uh, a member of my team will edit your interviews and i was lucky enough to have like one of uh, a member of my team off and I was editing the episode where you were talking to Henry Winkler. Mm. I, and I just absolutely love that. If you, if you have not heard that episode, really go out and listen to it uh, again. It's, it, are you effing kidding me with, for, with Jojo from juries? It was such a sweet story and he's just such a, a wonderful guy. And, oh and, and he was talking with you and uh, and your daughter. It was just so sweet. Oh, thank you so much. That means so much to me. I was so proud of that because, first of all, I got to meet, like me, like face to screen to screen anyway, um, someone that I idolized as a kid for a million reasons. And I started to go down that sort of rabbit hole. And I, I figured out a lot of reasons for why. And I wrote about that on my sub stack, which is of the same name. But um, he's kind of a, a true real life hero. I mean, he is yeah. really the Fonz in many ways. He's It's part of who he is, but it's also very different. But he's an incredible human being. And he's just so generous of spirit, truly, truly generous of spirit. So that interview was really special to me. And I felt like I was talking to an old friend. It sounded like that. It really weird, did. Which is weird because I don't know, like, know him, know him, you know? Yeah. he, he He's really one of those those few people in the media, and I know a few of them, who really is just earnest and genuine and good hearted and and an all around nice guy. And it was it, it 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 came out in his interaction with you and your daughter and 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 the 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 way that you guys had, had met each other. It was just it was just a wonderful conversation. Yeah, thank you. Really thank you. And I went, and like to just to plug his book because we're talking about him. Totally. His book was such a revelation for me. It was so surprising because I'm not gonna spoil anything, but he, you know, his 
his start was very dark. Like very, you yeah. would not associate someone so joyful and grateful for being here and so generous of spirit to have come from a world that was so dark, but he did and, and he overcame it. The whole book is about a lot about adversity and overcoming difficulties and challenges. And I just think he's really an inspiration for many lab, many reasons. And that, that book is so good. I highly recommend it. Really, yeah. really, really yeah. good. Yeah. He, he, he's, I, I'm, I'm glad he's on this planet with us yeah. doing yes. do, doing things and being Me a human too. being. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you are out there and and multiple times a day you are like just have these wonderful sharp, funny, incisive comments that um that 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 poke at the right and poke at Trump and make really excellent points and and it's it's an extension of your personality as I as I hear it on on the podcast and what you're saying i'm wondering how you got started doing that how did you get involved in social media and how did you build it into the thing that that you that you built it into because i mean you're uh, you know i checked last i don't think you're quite at a million but you're almost there by the time we finish this conversation you may get a million twitter followers i'm not sure but how did you get started it's uh, it's funny because this is going to sound crazy i'm sure and i've said it before and people are like what did she just say but I, like a lot of people, I kind of credit, not in the way he, I, anyone would you know, want to credit him for anything, but Donald Trump sort of like mm. saved my life. And that sounds <laughs> so crazy to say. I hear you. But I his, hear you. His awfulness, right? I think it inspired something in so many of us that were like, holy, I have to do something. I have to say something. Yeah. And um I know that that's true of a lot of people, like I said, but it's definitely true of me. So in 2016, well, I'll just preface this by saying that like leading up to 2016, I was a suburban mom doing suburban mom stuff. I had two toddlers. I was busy. I was tired. I was really worn down and I was feeling kind of lost. Like I'd been untethered from my old spirited self because I went to school and majored in communications, politics and law, thought I was going to be a press secretary. Clearly didn't happen. But I did end up standing behind that podium at 49 years old, which is a whole nother story. But uh, yeah, so I was just this kind of like lost soul. It was just sad. And like I didn't feel connected to anything other than just being a mom, which is so important to me. Um, number one thing that most, matters most. But that's all I was. I was a function of motherhood. And so I had disengaged from politics. And then I'm watching this orange con man coming down the escalator mm -hmm. i was at the gym i remember i was on like a stair step where i put the audio on and i'm listening and i'm like did he just say did he just say did he just say that mexico's not sending their best did he just call mexicans rapists like did he just say that and so, so he I was coming down the escalator and you were going up the stair climber. Yeah. And, you know, it, like, so it, that's a wonderful metaphor. He's descending it really into is. the depths I never thought and about you're it. ascending into the heights. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Except I was literally going nowhere and he was taking an entire country, if not the yeah. world, to hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I, I thought to myself, oh, my God, this is a joke. Like, Republicans are going to denounce this at once, obviously. And it. As you know, as we all know, it didn't really happen like that. Yeah. And then it was just one step after another of just what? And then by the Access Hollywood tape, I was like, okay, okay, I'm up. I'm awake. You woke me up now. Okay, I'm I'm coming back online. And I was like, I need to stop this person. And then I couldn't. None of us could clearly. I woke up. So I'll just tell you this real fast story yeah. because it's very important to me. Yeah. When I tucked the I took the kids to vote with me, I always do. When I tucked them in at night, I was crying in the parking lot, by the way. I said, I just voted for the first female president ever in our history. Mm. I tucked them in that night. I think they were four and seven. Mm -hmm. And I said, my son was very smart at seven. I'm very aware. I said, tomorrow morning, you're going to wake up and right will have prevailed. The good guy will have won. And I went off on something about everything being right in the world. And then, of course, we know what happened. So yeah. when Leo woke up, my son, he found me in the bathroom on the floor crying my eyes out. I tried to pull it together. And I was, as all of us were, probably a disaster. And all he said to me in that moment, because he knew, was, but you said the good, the good guy would win. You said right would, right would prevail, like, like in a Marvel movie. You said that. How did this, how did this happen? And I didn't have an answer. 
how do you explain this fundamental thing that you've always told your kids is true about the universe? Like, do the right thing for the right reasons, that the universe will reward you for that. And I couldn't explain to him why that wasn't true, but it wasn't true anymore. And so then I was like, okay, well, now I'm really going to fight because we're going to correct this wrong. And I have not shut up since. <laughs> I haven't. Wow. That, so, I mean, I, I, I love the fact that, that you brought your kids with you. I love the fact that, in a way, it seems like, because we all say this, you know, we're fighting for our kids, but you had that moment where it really did seem like, I am going to fight for this because my kid is here and, like, he's he's, he's bringing it to me and yeah. saying, I, th- I thought the good, good guys were going to win. And you realized, like, in that moment, like, how important and critical it was because that that kind of encapsulates it for the next generation. And, that, and looking forward to 2024, that encapsulates the reason why we have to get out there and fight this fight and be engaged. And, mm-hmm. and because there are your kids and there are my kids and there are mm-hmm. the kids of everyone across this country who are either going to live in a democracy or in an authoritarian state. And that mm-hmm. really is the choice that we face. And, and you felt that super personally in that moment. And here we are again. Right. Which – I never act. I will confess, I've gotten a lot of things wrong in my life. I didn't think that the Supreme Court was going to overturn Roe. I didn't. I confess, I got that wrong. I believed those liars when they said that it was established law. I believed them, which was foolish on my part. I've learned a lot since then. But I got it wrong on Trump, too. I thought, well, they finally got their opportunity to untether themselves from this pariah. They're going to release him into the wild. He'll disappear. <laughs> <laughs> into the, into go the free, mist. Donald! Go free! <laughs> Born free! They were gonna, they were gonna unleash him like the pool water at Mar-a-Lago over the video <laughs> surveillance. Yeah, I really thought so. And I'll tell you what, boy, did I get that one wrong? I got 2016 wrong, and I got Trump coming back for 2024 wrong. I really did. But we are still in this fight, and not only are we in this fight, mm-hmm. we've seen the sort of teaser like. A trailer version yeah. of 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 what a really unleashed Trumpian. Let's not even call it a presidency because it's it would be a dictatorship. We the, know we have all the previews. We don't have to guess. The twenty twenty five project. That's what you are referring to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. that is yeah. Some frightening shit. Right. Yeah, it's the own police force. Yeah, so oh, they're gonna go out God. and make sure that all the put put down all the protests in his name. Oh my God! Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it, I, I mean. Yeah, this this really is. A, I mean, even even if you're going to be utterly cynical about it, and I, I get that way sometimes because I see a lot of faults with the Democratic Party. You mm-hmm. you you cannot ignore this. You cannot. I mean, you can be as cynical as you want and say, "Oh, the Democrats, you know, they're going to screw things up too." You mm-hmm. cannot ignore the fact that we are staring down the barrel of an autocracy. Bottom line, Trump doesn't know what he's doing. Right. However, he had not experienced what it was like, and he didn't really have a sense of the the levers of power, and he didn't really care about it. Now Mm -hmm. he cares about getting revenge. And Mm -hmm. if for that reason alone, he is going to dive into this. And and the people around him, one, they're going to be far fewer just – Republican general apparatchiks who are just kind of going along for the party line who in a pinch will say, oh, my God, well, this is really fucked up. I'm not going to deal with this, as Mm -hmm. a few of them did in the course of his his first term. There are going to be more just hardcore people out there, hardcore, you know, Gestapo types Mm -hmm. who are just going to carry through and who are devotees of of a very far right wing platform so it's going to be far worse and we should have no illusions about that whatsoever Mm -mm. and Mm -mm. yeah and we and and we really need to like be aware of that and prepared for it and and spend the 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 next 11 months fighting very very hard against the possibility of of that happen and and I, i i i am very gladdened 
to see that Maine and Colorado yeah. have done with I know that Oregon is working on it too. Yeah. A bunch of other states are working on it too. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, I just hope that 